Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today I'm gonna show you three money-making tips for the upcoming Markarth DLC in ESO. These tips are things that you can do no matter what your level is, so don't worry about being max level to make some gold. Also, there will be a bonus tip at the end, so make sure to stick around. And with any of these tips, as always, you can come by my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash probably got this on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, you can join our Discord and Guild. We have guilds on all platforms. The link to the Discord and Twitch is in the description. Also, you can check out all of our content on the website at BrobbyGotThis.com and on Twitter at BrobbyGotThis. But let's jump into some money-making tips. Tip number one, and this is my favorite, doing the daily quests in Markarth. With every DLC or expansion, they add new daily quests that can drop new motifs, furnishing plans, and other valuable items. This hasn't changed with Markarth. This is something that I love doing with my guild members and players on stream because they are easy and you can do them multiple times on your character. And again, any level can do these. According to the patch notes, when I have been in the Markarth city, it looks like there are three daily quest givers. These are Gwynfi, Brawlthahan, and Neldina, who looks badass, by the way, in Markarth. With these daily quests, they will give you a world boss delve and Harrow Storm to do. There are two new delves and two new world bosses. What that means is you can do four of these a day on each character, plus your hair storm daily, making it five. The reason being is these quests can be shared as long as it's one that you haven't completed. And to share quests, you just go to your journal and press the F key on PC and it shares them with your group. But let me explain that a little bit more. So if you get one delve and complete it, if a friend has the other daily for the other delve of the zone, you can do that one as well. That means that if you do these four on each character, I could do these on all 15 of my characters for a total of 75 daily quests when you add the Harrowstorm quests as well. That's 75 chances at getting motifs and furnishing plans. Now I know not everyone has that many characters, but even if you do on one or two, that's still a solid amount of coffers that you can get. Those coffers can contain act thin sand, armory motif chapters, I'm sorry if I messed that up, uh, set items and possible furnishings. If you want to check out more daily quests too, you can learn about them on my daily quest guide in the description or the top of the screen. These dailies though are a great way to farm for some gold and the best part about them is you don't have to be any certain kind of level. There are going to be so many people in the reach zone when this releases, so you will find people to do these with no problem, so don't worry about that. Also, these motifs will be a hot commodity when the DLC releases. Tip number two is farming Harrow Storms. This zone is going to be perfect for farming Harrow Storms because it is a lot smaller than Western Skyrim. And since the Harrow Storms are random and it's not a set pattern like Dolmen's, the smaller zone, the better it is to farm them. Again, this is not a money-making method that requires any sort of level. There are going to be tons of players doing Harrow Storms at the beginning of this release, and really it won't be too hard to farm these after the initial surge because there aren't as many Harrow Storms, like I said, so you can farm these quicker and more efficiently. But what you're looking for with these are really just all the items that they can drop. They can drop multiple items that can be sold to merchants for a flat rate of gold, like treasures and things of that sort, like vile coagulant. These will stack up a lot over time. These are underrated money makers in my opinion. And you can also get furnishings and things of that nature that will sell again pretty high, especially initially when the DLC releases. Again, we will be running these on stream and you can find plenty of people in the zone to do these with you. Also leave a comment below letting me know what you are most excited about with Mark Arth and any other tips you have for players. And if you wanna know how to do hair storms, I do have a hair storm guide in the description or the top of the screen. Tip number three is opening every container known to man as well as farming resource nodes. They said that there are 40 new furnishings with this release. That means that they can drop from containers, dressers, wardrobes, monsters, coffers, you name it. So there are a lot of sources. The benefit we have as players is again, this zone isn't massive. So you can traverse this zone pretty easily. You can also farm resource nodes quickly as well in this zone. But opening every container is going to be an easy money maker, especially if you find some of these furnishing plans because they are going to sell for a decent amount on guild traders because the demand is going to be very high initially and the purple ones will continually sell for a good bit after the release. Again, you don't need to be max level or anything of that nature. Or any level can do these. And it does help if you're gonna be sneaking around stealing stuff, make sure to have some sort of sneak bonuses or sets that can help with that or certain passives as well. But I'm telling you, these furnishing plans and things you can steal are going to sell nicely. 
The bonus tip for those of you that made it this far is farming known and popular sets in various zones. You can honestly do that right now. With the item set collection coming out with Markarth, players are going to want to complete their sets so they can get the least amount of transmute crystal cost when reconstructing items. That means that any popular sets like Briarheart, Mother Sorrow, Plague Doctor Spriggins, Venomous, Winter's Respite, and many other sets are going to probably sell for a higher price depending on how the market in ESO reacts. And I've already seen some items sell for really high on uh, guild traders that are way higher than they usually are because people are trying to gear up for this release. The beauty of this is you don't even need to be CP160 to do this because the item set collection doesn't care if you register a set item at level 40 or CP160. So that means if you get a Mother Star and Furnace Staff, you can either put it in your collection system or you can sell it because now someone will buy that so they can deconstruct it and get that into their collection. And I think you have a case to sell sub CP160 gear for popular sets for a decent price. I'm not saying sell it for 100K, but I think that there will be a demand for it so you can have the luxury to charge a decent price. And I'm telling you y'all, there are people already doing this in Guild Traders. People are going to be buying specific set items, even for sets that aren't even used as much, just so they can actually craft things at the lowest transmute crystals i'm telling you this is a great way to make some money you can just think about it if you just all that junk that you have left over you could just sell it on guild traders and make some gold and that would stack up pretty nicely over time and again every single item you get now is not trash because if you get a shield for instance you might have a case to sell that on guild trader because people are going to need to complete their sets they want the lowest transmute crystal cost and again if you want to check out my item set collection video to learn about how that works, make sure to check it out in the description or the top of the screen. But that's gonna wrap up the video, y'all. I hope you guys uh, got something from these three tips and the bonus tip. These were quick tips, and I plan on making an overarching updated money-making video here in the future because I found some methods that I think a lot of you would really, really like, and it can make you some fast gold in the game. But again, make sure to comment below let me know uh, what you're excited about with this, if you have any other money-making tips for players in the Mark Hearth zone specifically. But make sure, again, you can always come by the Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash Bobby Got This, if you want to ever ask any questions. You can also come to the Discord and the Guild. The links are in the description for the Discord and Guild and all the other links as well. You can follow me on Twitter at Bobby Got This. And I want to give a shout-out to all the patrons. I do appreciate all of your support, y'all. You guys are amazing and i really really do appreciate you supporting me above and beyond if you would like to become a patron make sure to check out the link in the description you can check out all the perks and benefits there but until next time y'all just remember to have faith be great and i'll see you on eso